nothing could have prepared me for Dr. Death's unrepentant manner. We decided to find those organizations in the world that could help us with technology. And of course, they were mostly in the UK, in uh, America, uh, odd few stations in Europe. And we then visited these places, uh, explained to them what was our problem, uh, what our problem was, and then of course we told them what the information that we needed and we then eventually got some of the information from them. The rest we bought, borrowed and stole. Strangely enough, in America and in the UK, the help that came from there was ideological. Did you know David Kelly? Do you have a relationship with him? I met Mr. Kelly on three occasions, three or four occasions, uh, from a purely pure information exchange point, point of view. Um, the little contact I had with him, I found him to be uh, an, old, an, an intelligent, honest, keen fella who uh, really cared about his work. Did you ever meet him in Porton Down? That I can't answer, uh, but we did meet him on a few occasions. What was the extent of Masson's relationship with Kelly and the West's most secret military labs? You were able to visit Porton Down? Fort Detrick? Yes, yes, we did that. I wonder if you could talk about that. No, I wouldn't like to, but I mean, you know, the next question that I get asked is who, who arranged it and why and what and where, and then, uh, you know, I already have hassles with the UK and the American gov governments. I don't need any more, thank you. It's enough for me. But su suffice to say, we went there with no objective of ever doing any damage to either the UK or the USA. Our sole objective was to make sure or to determine what they could do to help us and how we could... Uh, enhance our own program based on their knowledge. The people who knew Larry Ford in his neighborhood, they had no idea what he was up to, that he was working with the South African German Warfare Program. Larry Ford was messing around with chemical biological warfare. Larry was a wonderful fellow, mad as a hatter. He used to rock up in South Africa having flown in intercontinental flights with a trousers pocket full of goodies in sealed vials that he claimed were new and wonderful organisms and could do the most wonderful things on Earth. Larry Ford had mutated cholera, typhoid, anthrax, botulism, bubonic plague, and had also come up with germs that he called kaffir killing germs. Kaffir, as you may know, in Afrikaans is the equivalent of the N-word. So these were germs that were specifically engineered to kill only black people. In other words, an ethnic biological weapon. Had Project Coast really gone this far? From the beginning, this idea of can we find a way to control the size of the black population was considered one of the most important areas of research. It got even more important over time as the size of the black population and the seriousness of the uprisings increased. So. There, that's one reason why they got into genetic modification research into is there a way to have contraceptives uh, um, that could mm, somehow uh, basically sterilize blacks without them knowing it and kind of all kinds of what at the time or in hindsight seemed like pretty far out research. There was some talk about an ethnic weapon. Project I was working on, there was a quote, Black Bomb. That was great, yeah, that was the most fun I've had in my life. Um, the, that, that whole episode of the ethnic weapon was, was very well set out in court, in the court papers. What happened is we had the objective to synthesize a certain protein that was in sperm for contraceptive purposes. The objective was that if you could immunize a woman against sperm, then you would make her in, infertile. Uh, we were asked to do this by another country who had a population explosion problem as part of exchange of technology. They were giving us other stuff. They asked, well, we haven't got the time or the place to do that. Will you guys do that? 